Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Smoot. I'm a paddleability surgeon at the Mayo Clinic. That's a surgeon that specializes in uh, surgery of the liver, pancreas, and bile tubes. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cholangiocarcinoma, or cancer of the bile ducts, or bile tubes of the liver. In general, there's a broad classification for these tumors, are extrahepatic and intrahepatic, meaning inside the liver or outside the liver. There are multiple different types of risk factors associated with development of these tumors, and they vary from patient to patient, although in most patients, we don't find an obvious risk factor. The most common presenting symptom for patients with these tumors is jaundice. It's turning yellow, the skin, the eyes. The urine can turn dark because of the buildup of bilirubin in the blood system, in the bloodstream. The uh, diagnosis of these tumors uh, is done based on CT scan most of the time. CT scan of the abdomen demonstrates uh, stricturing of the bile tubes or narrowing of the bile tubes and can demonstrate the actual tumor itself. For patients with these type of tumors, they require a complex multidisciplinary approach. We often have diagnostic radiologists involved, interventional radiologists, gastroenterologists, surgeons like myself, medical oncologists who deliver chemotherapy, and possibly radiation oncologists uh, that deliver radiation. There are several ways to treat these tumors, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. And in surgery, we have a couple of different approaches, resection or removal of part of the liver, as well as transplantation. This highly coordinated complex care requires a team of uh, a care team that can be put together to uh, diagnose and take care of these patients. That's one advantage that we have at a center such as Mayo Clinic, uh, bringing, patient, uh, bringing patients here and uh, coordinating a care team uh, to develop a, uh, a care plan for them. For patients with a diagnosis of cholangiocarcinoma, we attempt to stage the tumor or determine whether or not the tumor can be resected. There are multiple types of tests that we do to try to determine this. We often begin with a CT scan or a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, and we typically include a CT scan of the chest to rule out any uh, spread of the tumor, which sometimes can go to the lungs. We also need to determine uh, how the blood vessels that go into and out of the liver are related to the tumor. This helps us decide if we can take it out. In order to further define the extent of the bile tube involvement or the bile duct involvement, we often get a test called an MRCP. That's an MRI scan that has special dye and special sequences that show us the bile system uh, within the liver. Occasionally, rather than an MRCP, we use a test called an ERCP, and that's an endoscopic test where a videoscope is placed into the mouth down to the entrance of the bile tube into the intestine, and dye is placed back up the bile tube. As most patients have some sort of, uh, some level of jaundice or yellowing of the skin and eyes, uh, and some of the associated complications with that, uh, we often will place a stent, and there's two ways that that can occur. Uh, via the endoscopic approach, similar to that ERCP test, where a stent is then put up to hold the bile tube open, or by puncturing through the liver in a test that has uh, called a percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram, uh, where a tube is placed through the liver uh, and stenting open that uh, narrowing or uh, the area where that tumor is within the liver. Once this occurs, the jaundice often rapidly resolves, appetites improve, and patients feel better. We then uh, go about determining whether or not the patient can undergo a resection. Uh, less than half patients who uh, present with cholangiocarcinoma are able to undergo a resection. Uh, for some patients, a very select few patients who cannot undergo a resection, they may be able to undergo transplantation. Mayo Clinic pioneered transplantation for cholangiocarcinoma and remains it's the highest volume center in the world for treatment of this disease process, uh, both overall and with transplantation. This specialized level of care and this coordination of multiple types of uh, physicians required for care of these patients really does uh, lend itself to an institution like Mayo Clinic where these large care teams can be assembled.